Montgomery County Council's passed an historic rent stabilization bill into law. It protects renters against rent hikes, capping the yearly increase at 3% and the inflation rate at 6%. The county council estimates nearly 40% of Montgomery County residents are renters, and opponents of the bill say it will do the opposite and deter developers and builders from much needed building affordable housing in the county. Matt Lozak is with the Montgomery County Renters Alliance and he supports the bill and uh, he joins us live this Sunday morning. Uh, Matt, good to see you again. See you, First of all, I, I was in some of these hearings and this got a little contentious at times between members of the county council. This wasn't the only bill that they considered. There was another one that would have even gone further, wasn't there? Yeah, the Home Act would have uh, capped rents at 3%, but uh, there was a compromise. We knew this was coming down the pike. But let me go some back to something that you addressed that is a common myth. Uh, that somehow rent stabilization or other renter protections are going to uh, deaden investment in multifamily housing. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown from the Joint Center for Harvard, uh, Harvard's Joint Center for Housing Studies, from the Office of Legislative Oversight's reports, they did extensive research on this. Washington, D.C., New York City, San Francisco have extreme building going on and why because these are places where there's high demand for housing and where you have high demand for housing you have customers and where you have customers you have investment plus this bill in particular has a 23 year exemption for any new investment so well, the renters alliance has never taken the position and neither did the council uh, neither did county executive elrich that anybody who invests in a multifamily housing apartment shouldn't make a return on their investment and, and obviously uh, make a profit so that's off the table. Well, we didn't pull that out of thin air. That's something that the developers themselves are saying. And one of the things we heard when we covered this story as well from the developers was that if you do this, you run the risk of a lot of these buildings that are apartments right now going condo, and the people who rented those buildings wouldn't be able to buy into them, and then they would be back into the situation where they're looking for rental housing. Well, we've heard these myths before, and they've all been debunked. The, the landlord developer industry pitches a line. They've been saying it for years. The sky will fall. The Russians will invade. All of these things will happen. And yet data shows that in places where you've had long-standing rent stabilization and other renter protections, that investment continues, that the condo conversion thing just doesn't happen. Uh, rental housing is very profitable. Uh, and a lot of people nowadays are living in rental housing permanently, not just as a station on the way to owning, but actually as a way of life. And so this is a very profitable industry. I know that the rental housing industry does not like it. Mm -hmm. They don't like most industries. They don't like to be regulated. But we have to have a balance between housing stability, quality, and, and uh uh, long-term viability versus profit-making. There has to be a balance. Housing's not the same thing as beer and cigarettes. Well, if the Russians invade <laughs> Montgomery County, we'll have a whole other news story. <laughs> but I, I want to talk about why this is necessary. Obviously, there were controls put in place during the pandemic that have now ended. What happened during the pandemic with rents that led to both of these competing interests on the council deciding to come together and, and cap this? Well, first of all, the housing crisis is a pre-existing condition from the pandemic. We have seen increasing numbers of people who are forced out of their homes because they're being priced out. So this was going on before the pandemic. The pandemic brought it into stark relief. We saw a great uptick because of so many working families, low-income families, people on fixed incomes mm -hmm. who were forced out of retail and restaurant jobs and other sort of working uh, family level jobs uh, and then couldn't pay their rent for extended periods of time. That's why there was the federal stimulus to keep everybody stable and to keep everybody from moving around in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, that brought it into stark relief. But there was a plan passed recently that's under consideration by Montgomery County, a vision plan which is going to rezone areas that allow for multi-unit dwellings. Wasn't that supposed to be the answer to providing more availability in the rental market? It's another landlord developer industry uh, uh, myth, uh, the, the idea that we can build our way out of housing instability. We take no position on building new housing. Build away. That's great. But if you think for a minute that the landlord developer industry is going to flood the market with enough apartments to bring the existing population's rents down, that's not going to happen. And what we're not seeing is affordable housing being built. What we're seeing is high-end housing being built. So both things need to happen at the same time, but one is not a substitute for the other. All right. Matt Lozak with the Montgomery uh -huh. County Renters Alliance. We appreciate you joining us live Thank you, Tom. this Sunday morning. Good to talk to you. Up next.